All right, what's up, guys? My name is Lal Sampa, and today we are going to be breaking down the VOD review of one of the best wins in the upper finals to qualify for grants for FNCS, and that is with Re and Ritual. So I myself, Lal Sampa, a competitive Fortnite player with over eleven thousand dollars earned. We're going to take the time to break down their best game, which was a seventeen elimination victory royale. So we're going to break down their fights, how they open up fights what they're doing right, and just how they're doing so well. Let's jump right into it. All right, so Ritual and Reet are gonna be dropping over at the Reckless Railway. They are contested by another two teams, um, but during this time, we're gonna see them land directly on the boss and look to eliminate the boss for the medallion, um, as well as the Mythic SMG. Now, initially, the first thing you're gonna see them do is, of course, loot up. They know their loot path, but also they're going to take down the excess bots on the side. The main boss for the medallion and the mythic, they can instantly take her out without any extra bosses uh, coming through. Now, obviously, we're still going to have the other boss or the uh, other AIs spawn on the side. From here on out, um, one of the things I talk a lot about when we look at the gameplay of players in Fortnite Championship Series FNCS um, is they're going to need to look for some damage on enemy players for Surge. If you don't know what Surge is, basically it's a mechanic in the game that forces teams to fight. So there's not so many teams in the game that the servers crumble under the massive weight of all these players building, shooting, and fighting, right? So they're going to need to get Surge. So how do they do it? The first thing that they're going to do is they're going to make their setup, make sure they're set up for the rest of the game. Um, if they're not prepared to be able to fight another team, let's say, for example, uh, they don't have enough materials, they don't have enough heals, or they don't have uh, the right weapons, and they're, they're never going to win a fight. So you can see in the early game, the only thing they're doing is they're looking at the most efficient things to farm. So as we're watching Re walk around, you notice, let's even scroll back here a little bit. Um, you'll see he's he's farming really specific things. He's also uh, looking to get some heals from the vending. He finds some EMP nades or something, right? He uses them against the, the vending and then buys some half pots. Only got one, but... He did get three mech kits though, but that's also the gold from the vault too. But what I'm trying to really, really express here is you can see he has about 90 metal, but he's farming these posts, which are two hit. And it looks like he's getting about 20 metal per, per hit. Now, this is what separates a really good player from a great player to the best, right? Is that they know exactly what to be hitting to farm the most materials, the most efficient things, because it looks as though as if he was farming other things, it would give him less materials like... You know, this uh, little mailbox on the right might uh, might give him like five, ten metal, but these these uh, centerpieces are giving him twenty for two pickaxes. So they're efficient with their farming. And now, uh, for the second part of the game plan, they're heading over to the um, the forecast tower. So they're gonna go ahead and grab that. So they made it up to the forecast tower, and from this point on, um, they're trying to just check their surroundings, see if anyone's around them. Um, they have do have enough loot to be able to fight if they need to. They have some of the best loot in the game because they've got the mythic, right? Um, and you can see even Reach just checking to see is someone in that bush. And he's actually continuing to farm. So after grabbing the, uh, the medallion and the mythic SMG, they come over to this forecast tower right over here. And they set up. So Ritual is on top of the hill. He's farming the little metal base for his metal. And Reet is farming the top of this house for his metal. And it's a lot of metal. Metal is probably the most important thing to get when it comes to uh, competitive games because you can only find metal in certain places, although you can find wooden brick almost everywhere around the map. All right, and so now the AI spawns and they're working together to instantly take him out. And then once they take him out, they use the key, put it into the uh, forecast tower, and now they can see where next zones are. So since they can see where next zones are, they can plan a step ahead. We're in a replay, so we don't get to see everything that they see, but we do know that they can plan one zone ahead and it'll be important later when we watch them rotate. Now, this is an important part of the game. This is the first part where we actually see their fighting in action. Again, Re and Ritual are one of the, if not the best fighters on NA Central. How do they start this fight? Now, number one, the number one thing that they're going to be looking for here is actually Poppy Blast and Zyro have been using the EMP nades on the vending machine. And when you use the EMP nades, there actually is a visual audio, which both Reet and Ritual noticed, and they're beginning to set up for this fight. Now, this is super, super, super important. This is the key fundamental aspect of why Ritual and Reet are so good at starting fights. So Ritual has the sniper. He wants to get a snipe off before the fight starts, because if you do damage to your opponent and then you force the fight, they are lower health than you. They have to heal. They have to back up. They have to play safe. They can't play aggressive on you. So basically they have, they hold all the control 
when it comes to a situation where they get the opening snipe. And what I really love here is that Reed's going to run straight through the center and look for an opportunity from one side while Ritual is going all the way on the outside. And I'm not sure if Ritual did this on purpose or not, but it looks to me as if he's finding a way to stay farther away from the opponents so they don't get visual audio on him. I don't know if that's the case, but that's what my guess would be because Zyro has no idea. Actually, no, he does realize at some point. Or no, he's, he's running away from Reed. He has no idea Ritual's behind him. And guess what? Ritual's going to get that great angle. Now, again, this is a replay, so you're not seeing exactly what Ritual is seeing in the game. Don't forget that. That's very important. But Zyro gets uh, sniped in the back by Ritual. Great snipe by Ritual. And now, at this point, they have a health advantage. Reed is 200 HP. Ritual's 200 HP. And not only that, they already have a pinch set up. Zyro has to protect his front and his back to be able to survive in this fight. Um, he needs to get to his teammate. And so he's starting to box up. He's starting to heal. And he realizes, you know what? Oh, wow. The pinch is coming fast. So they're already on him right away, making sure he can't heal. So even though Zyro started popping the half pot early, he couldn't even start getting it off. Um, and Poppy Blast has to start coming over and helping his teammate. He does get some tags on Reet, but uh, still, the pressure is on. That's not enough damage to stop Reet from W keying. Plus, on top of that, since they have the medallion, they don't have to worry too much about losing a little bit of shield. Um, they still will be at 150 HP maximum, but still, that's 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 better than being 70, which is what Zyro's at right now. So they're, they're going to keep the pressure up, um, and they're going to keep trying to stay on top of them, um, making sure that they can force them into an unfavorable fight. So Zyro and Poppy make a bunch of space here, right? And with all that space, that's going to allow them to start healing and, and, and um, getting healthier. But the problem is, is that Reet and Ritual are so good at creating these pinches. They're not attacking from the same side. If they were attacking from the same side, Poppy Blast could just hold both of them out on this side, right? But since Ritual's on one side and Reet's on the other, Poppy Blast has to hold out one while Zyro's healing. And Zyro might have to stop healing because there's not much he can do. But actually, Poppy Blast does get in the middle of, of all the uh, aggression, right? Gets in between Reet. And Zyro, so Zyro can start healing, but now Poppy Blast is the one getting double sprayed, and he's actually going to take some damage, and so now there's even more pressure, right? And here we go with a continued pinch, continued pressure. Ritual coming back on the, on the other side, and still Zyro isn't full HP still. So they're still on the back foot, right? Because the less health that you have than your opponent, the more likely that if you guys trade each other, both of you take a shot directly at each other, 50-50 or anything, uh, the more likely the chance you go down. So we're going to see them spraying, taking pieces, and Zyro and Poppy Blast are kind of stuck. So the thing that's super important about trying to own space in box fight scenarios is kind of surrounding your opponent with pieces. So there are a couple of pieces over here that are all rituals. Uh, there's a couple of pieces over here that are all reets. And so what they're doing is they're cornering them. And now Ritual is pushing them and reet is also pushing them back into pieces that are their own and ritual is going to go back around just because of that start where the snipe happened with ritual from the back the whole fight has been has been you know on the back foot and the way that ritual and reet kind of corral them into space that they can own or retake and potty blast having to basically 1v2 um to be able to to, to take other fight which isn't necessarily zyro's fault per se Right? It's just that Ritual and Reet got a great opening. And that with, with that opening, they were able to uh, continue pushing the pressure. But since Poppy Blast is, has basically been 1v2ing, he's been holding off Reet. He's been holding off Ritual. Zyro has been trying to heal. Right, And now comes the very end of the fight where Poppy Blast is fighting Reet face-to-face. -face. Ritual gets a back piece. And here comes the 50-50. Now, Poppy Blast was 200 HP. But the difference is here is that uh, Ritual has that Mythic SMG which is going to shoot a lot faster than that Enforcer or AK. I'm not even sure what it's called, if I'm honest with you. I just call it the AK. So I'm going to call it the AK with the AK. And he eliminated some right there. Um, but even then, even if he was able to do more damage to Ritual, Reet was right on his back. The amount of pressure that's been on this team the entire time they've been fighting has been immense. They get that, that uh, opening damage, and then they just push, 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 corral, 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 own space until eventually they have a perfect pinch just like this. Now, what you're going to see from here is they're going to actually slow down because Ritual did take some damage. And at this point in time, this is the only way Zyro, um, the, the final player of this team, could ever make a play. But Reet, now actually on the opposite side, did get damage. So if Ritual and Reet push in together, which they're about to do uh, against this player, you can just do the math, right? Reet's 150 HP, Ritual's 101, Zyro is 42. That's a, what, a 200 health almost? Uh, disadvantage so it, it, i would be really surprised if zyro could somehow 1v2 this um as long as reet and ritual push in together so here we're gonna see them push in 
and Zyro's down. So, super important. They get an elimination, two eliminations. That's a lot of, uh, you know, points for them, of course. But also, they had a long fight where they did a lot of damage. Um, that's the surge that they need to survive those surge warnings. And they're going to go into more fights later because uh, Reed and Ritual are just, again, some of the craziest fighters ever. But great refresh, great surge, great fight. So one of the most important things about um, this scenario is uh, the confidence that Ritual and Reed have when they go into fights. So with them being kind of stacked, they have a lot of materials. They have a lot of heals. They have the medallion. They have a mythic. They have a sniper. They're not afraid to take a fight if they haven't taken any damage yet. That's the important part more than anything else, is that they have not taken any damage yet. Um, so once they start taking damage, they might think a little different about how they start, you know, fighting an opponent. And with this setup, they basically boxed up this cache and Tavern and Edgy see them and realize they're trying to W key, right? And so he, they say, okay, you know what? They're W keying. We don't want to lose this game. They might not have qualified at this point, right? And they go over here to grab the loot from the cache. But Reet and Ritual took over some space. Some of these pieces are theirs. And instantly, we're going to talk about the corralling aspect of their fights again. Ritual on a different angle. Uh, Reet on a different angle. And what they're going to try to do is push them into a moment where they either aren't covering one of the angles or uh, they make a mistake. So let's see what happens. So in this scenario, uh, Ritual is taking pieces from Edgy as Reet is pressuring from the side and Tavern is making space. So Tavern is moving back, making space while Edgy is moving forward into them. But this is kind of a mistake. It's not a bad play by Edgy whatsoever, but it's just disjointed from Tavern. Tavern's going backwards, making space. Edgy's going forward to fight. So they're disjointed in, the, in what their game plan is, right? And Ritual and Reet are on the same page. Uh, Reet wants to push in from the side. Ritual wants to piece up. So Ritual does get the piece, gets the pump, and then Reet has the angle to be able to finish out the fight, hopefully. And actually, Ritual does end up getting jumped on a little bit. Edgy just starts going forward and says, hey, you know what? If you're going to push me, uh, let's see what happens. But here's the mistake. So... They didn't really keep track of the second player, Reet. And Reet literally just walks in their tarp. Um, and they're so focused on Ritual that Reet just runs in, holds the drummy out, and gets a double kill. And we're actually going to watch that one more time. So Ritual ends up getting pieced up, but he somehow lives. So what happens? So here you, are, here you see them going aggressive. He does get pieced up. That's one wood wall that Ritual has. And Edgy ends up piecing up everything else, but except that wood wall. That one wood wall is going to be super important for Ritual surviving. But also very important that Reet is applying pressure, right? So Ritual's going to run out. He's actually going to replace the piece before he runs out. So he doesn't get eliminated before he tries to run out. And then as he takes that piece instantly, he's trying to book it out, right? And at this moment, this is when Tavern comes over and he says, I got the piece. Let's look for him. But it's too late. Ritual is already gone. And now Reed is here and he's 50 50 him. Knocks one. And then now he's knocking Edgy right after. So really good timing, spacing, and awareness from Ritual and Reet controlling their area, being able to push in an aggressive opportunities. All right. And so this is the third fight that they take this game. And here's what is going on in their heads and looking at this fight. So you see CEO Golden, right? And you see Ozone. They're on the same team, but they are completely split from each other. Now, this is a strategy. What they're trying to do is Ozone is trying to control this area so he can get surge tagged. The thing is, is Golden was looking at an opportunity called out by Ozone, which is great. They're both possibly going to get two different angles on the same team. But the mistake is, is Golden wasn't looking at his back. And when that happens, Ritual and Reet come right under this ridge and instantly start looking for a fight. And they notice that that he's he's a solo, right? And this is a crazy play, a crazy headshot snipe, actually. So they, there's not very much fighting going on here. This is just a good aim. Um, so Golden starts to run away. As Golden is trying to grapple away, uh, he gets headshot sniped in the back, which I'll show you in a second. But how does Ritual hit this snipe? So the important part is look at the grappler and where it's going, right? He's going in one direction. The only way he can, he can, he can stop that one direction is by him, um, you know, stopping the grapple by pulling out another weapon or grappling a different direction. Uh, but he's going to go in one direction from this point on. So it's a pretty easy headshot snipe uh, for Ritual where he says, okay, he's going to end up there. Let me aim ahead and then bam. There you go. There's the headshot snipe. And so now we're getting kind of close to the end game here. And Ritual and Reed are trying to get into the next zone. So they're currently on the right side of zone. And they need to go all the way north to Lavish Lair. Um, as they're rotating, a team on the side. So again, I keep talking about it over and over. If you don't know what this is, Surge, right? This team needs Surge. So you can actually see the damage number on the right. You see that damage number? It says damage threshold. 19 below. 
So it's shy is looking for any damage he can get on opponents as they're going past, but they're below it. They're getting ticked. And so Ritual sees that, sees that Shy just got surged, right? And already he knows instantly from seeing Shy get cracked uh, and lose his shield that he already has an advantage. Ritual's gonna look for a shot. So he gets that snipe. And from here, this is now a 1v2 scenario. And also that's some extra loot that they can use as a refresh. So they're gonna push up. Once they have an advantage, um, 2v1 specifically, again, think about the health numbers, right? Um, Ritual's 170, Reed's 150, and Zuko, they don't know what health he is, but even if he was 200, they would still have more health than him. Um, and they're trying to keep the pressure up and push, 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 push. So Reed's spraying in, Ritual's spraying in, Zuko's trying to edit out, but it doesn't matter. With him editing and trying to build and everything, there's so much pressure, so much spray, and also the servers are kind of a little laggy. Uh, they can kind of just run in with their drum guns and with their SMGs, and then they're gonna get this elimination. The reason why this elimination is so easy for them to do is because that team did not get their surge and they were not very healthy and they weren't very looted versus ritual and reet are very looted very healthy and they had their surge they didn't have to worry about doing damage to anyone they just needed to rotate um and since they had that huge advantage they get the snipe and then they get the 1v2 and that's how they went do you see a player getting pressured he probably heard the uh shield crack as well you can hear it um as you're you know if you're close enough to it and he notices the knock and from this point he says okay i'm building towards it since he was the first team to build towards it and start taking it over he's the first person to be able to box it up and take the loot macwood and blake also had the same idea but macwood is one step behind reet um and also at the same time ritual and reet are pressuring macwood and blake off of the loot so they set up earlier for grabbing the loot they pressured the enemy team off the loot and now that they pressured them off they can take the loot now here's the mistake so they've got all this loot that they've captured they've got the mythic ar everything so macwood and uh blake also want the loot uh it's a little greedy it's not a bad play at all to go for this loot but the way they go about it is wrong um so you can watch it from reed's perspective what happens here is macwood opens up because there's a lot of materials and there's a lot of loot here that he's going for and he starts to gr he tries to grab the brick right and from his perspective the way that it looks it looks like he's safe but actually ritual and reed have a great angle and here ritual pulling out the sniper again um Dude's James Bond with a sniper or something. I don't know. Gets a snipe on the body. And now Macwood's 20 HP. And Reed just got the mythic AR. Uh, I think it's Nisha's AR. And he just sprays through. And he gets the knock. And now we're in a 1v2 scenario where they can just push in together and force the fight. So we get a little bit of a server lag here. Where everything kind of plumps up. And so we're going to have to wait and see what happens. But actually, I want to see. Did Blake live? No, I believe Blake went down. Let me see, though. I don't know where he went. I think he went down. I'm pretty sure he went down. I can't tell because of the, the server lag, but hey, you know what? Actually, we can count the numbers of eliminations they have, right? So I'm pretty sure they got the elimination. I don't know, though. He just disappeared on my screen, so. Where he's looking through his cone, he says, hey, this is what we're going to do. And he notices on the on the right here, NPen is looking at different teams. There's teams trying to rotate on this uh, south side, and nobody here is opening up. So their rotate is completely free. All right, so now we're getting to the moving zones. So many players all very close together. The most uh, interesting part of the entire game. So how are Ritual and Reet going to rotate through this? Don't forget, they do have the forecast tower so they can think a zone ahead. They can prepare a zone ahead, um, which gives them a huge advantage over everyone else. Here's, the, here's a great example of them utilizing that forecast tower, right? So they knew the zone was going to go south here. And so they positioned themselves right on the edge, right where south is going to start rotating. As they're rotating through this end game, they are trying to get to the front side and he notices this player in solo. So Ritual um, all, notices this player all by himself and says, hey, solo on me, solo on me. I'm going to pressure him. And Reet is already on the side. Freeze decides to run out and go for a 50-50. Um, he probably thought Ritual was a solo, but he didn't have enough information. Reet's on the side and they get the elimination. And um, yeah, which is a great refresh. And also big thing to know here is Ritual or Reet dropped his uh, medallion for Ritual so that Ritual can heal. Doesn't have to use all of his own heals to be able to heal up. Good teamwork. And zone goes back. And that kind of comes back to, again, the uh, forecast tower. They knew that they didn't have to go any farther up the hill, right? So they didn't worry about trying to layer up. They're on low ground right now. And zone pulls back into the water. So it's not going to go all the way up the hill again. And this is, again, coming back to the forecast tower and everything that they know. Okay, so they just got a big refresh. And what they're trying to do is control this layer and go back to their old tarp. Now, this is crazy. This is just opportunistic. But since they're playing in their old builds and they're playing in their old tarp, um, opportunities like this show up 
pretty often where players will be shambles, not have a lot of mats, not have a lot of heals, and so they'll have to fight. So as we come back in the old tarp, here we can see uh, they hear some shooting right behind them. Reet is looking, takes a look, and he sees, hey, there's a team fighting here. Opens it up, puts a cone on their head, and JoJo tries to get out, but actually he gets coned down into the box. And so now we have Ritual and Reet just having basically a free shots on these two players. One shooting an SMG, one shooting a uh, golden dr uh, drummy. So there's really no chance for Crypto and JoJo. And now another huge refresh. At this point in time, with this big of a refresh, right? They are probably the most matted across the entire lobby. And let's actually find out. So Reet and Ritual together combined 53 and 81, right? Um, going on to other teams. High ground is less than 30 builds. And we move on. We have Kanata and Aegis going for height, less than 30 builds. Pars and Baka around 60, not bad. Um, Zuki's and Bolts, uh, only 20, less than 30. Snacky and Possess, less than 15, right? You get the point. The point that I'm trying to make here is with, with such a gigantic refresh that they just received, they probably have the most materials across the entire everything, right? Every, uh, more than everyone else. And so since they have more materials than everyone else, they're going to look for an opportunity here shortly to go for high ground, which is the best position in the game. Let's see how they do it. So they're going to build ahead first and foremost. And the next zone is getting prepared. And as you see, as I was saying before, they, they've realized, hey, we have so many mats, we should go up, right? Um, and they look up and they notice, uh, Ritual notices, this team is in full wood, right? If a team is is uh, really, really strong or has a lot of material, they're going to build an either brick or a metal up on high ground. But as Ritual looks up, he notices, hey, they're in full wood, which means they probably are running out of materials, um, unless there's some crazy mind game going on. But I doubt it. I really doubt it. So Kanata's up on height. He gets sprayed out. Uh, Ritual starts to go up and then Reet notices an opportunity to do some damage to Kanata and gets an absolutely just crazy beam onto Kanata and Ritual's going up gets the pump onto Kanata and now at this point it's kind of free game they have so much resources from the refreshes that they got that they can pretty much just kind of go ham they took over high ground uh, this player Zuki said no mats and so Reet gets a free peek and they're on height at this point the game's over um, so what is the game plan from here Ritual is going to stay up on the high ground and he's going to use those two med kits to heal off while Reet drops down with a couple of materials and tries to stop anyone else from healing off and make sure that they can get the win, but also get some elim elimination points along the way. So let's see how he does it. So he stays up on height for a second there, drop down because he sees this team kind of just staying in zone, gets a wall, has that uh, zero ping from Dallas W and then also Ritual's helping him too. So he's not just spraying someone else. He's helping Reet specifically. Um, and Reet's able to play super aggressive off of that. It's a bunch of damage with the drummy, jumps in the water. There's a player there with no mats. And wow, now they're top two, one player left. Ritual on high ground is literally dancing. Love to see it. All right. And then he moves ahead. And as he moves ahead, Adris was healing off with some med kits in the back of his own because he had very little mats. And he comes in and bam, Ritual gets the big one pump. And that is how they won the game. So W, let's go. Crazy good fighters. Um, 17 elimination victory royale. This game on its own would qualify you to grand finals. Hope you guys enjoyed this breakdown by myself, Lol Sampa. If you guys enjoyed it, and if you guys would like to learn from me sometime, there actually is a Discord link down below where you can get some coaching. Um, and also I stream on Twitch pretty much five times a week, and I'm a competitive player myself as well. So if you guys would ever like to check it out, feel free. But I hope you learned something. Um, and if you do want me to VOD review someone, please leave a comment down below. Thank you guys so much. Hope you learned a lot. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.